It may be the most eye-catching development in printing since Gutenberg invented the printing press 600 years ago. A machine that can make copies of almost anything, but this time in 3D. It seems like science fiction, but 3D printing is already in use. Building hearing aids, jewelry, even parts for NASA. Now the technology is becoming available to anyone, meaning you can turn your garage into a small factory. So what would you build if you could create anything? Have a look. What you're watching is an ear being printed. Layer upon layer, tiny droplets are deposited, building up the structure. So this is someone's ear. This would uh, be printed to be someone's ear. Oh my goodness. The project is a type of 3D printing called bioprinting, led by Dr. Anthony Atala at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine in North Carolina. Same technology you have at your very own home, but instead of printing sheets of paper with ink, you're actually printing tissues with cells. The premise is simple. Send a scanned image of a body part to the printer, and the machine starts building. Ears, noses, fingers. Dr. Atala's goal is to transplant the parts directly into patients. So we're actually testing a lot of these structures uh, right now experimentally. The way it works is the cells are able to anchor onto the scaffold. They start making new tissue, and as that starts to happen, this scaffold goes away. An ear takes between four to six hours to make, printed with what's called bio-ink, a mixture of biodegradable gel and actual human cells. One of the big advantages of these technologies is that you are using the patient's own cells. And by doing so, really, you avoid the major problem of rejection. Dr. Atala has specialized in regenerative medicine since 1990. But it wasn't until this TED Talk two years ago that the promise of building body parts caught fire. 90% of the patients on the transplant list are actually waiting for a kidney. You can actually see the printer back here. And that's been printing this uh, kidney structure that you see here. Here it is. You can actually see that kidney as it was printed earlier today. While implanting kidneys like this is still at least a decade away, it holds the potential to revolutionize organ transplants. Well, up until just recently, the way that we made these tissues was to actually create them by hand, one by one. When you start thinking about getting these technologies to many patients and creating thousands of these organs at the same time, you need to automate the process. And that's where bioprinting comes in. Meaning you can make thousands of kidneys. You could make thousands of organs. You know, you just pick the organ you want to make, but then you allow the printer to do them over and over again. And is this a finger? This is actually a finger. Right now, Dr. Atala's bioprinting is in the preclinical phase. Simpler organs will be the first to reach patients, starting with skin. If this were, in fact, a wound, it would be dropping real skin cells over the wounded area. The skin printing project is being funded by the US military with the hope of treating injured soldiers in as little as five years. But while Dr. Atala's work is cutting edge, 3D printing isn't new. The technology has been around since the mid 80s, mainly used for prototyping in industrial settings. Professor Hod Lipson from Cornell University says that's changing. It has reached a level of technological maturity that it is uh, used beyond prototyping to actually make functional parts that are used in reality, and the aerospace industry is a good example. Some commercial planes are now outfitted with air ducts that are 3D printed, made smoother, lighter, and cheaper than the traditional method. Hollywood is using 3D printing to make costumes, like parts of the suit in Iron Man 2. And a professor in California plans to 3D print a house. 
In every case, a digital blueprint is either sketched or scanned and then sent to a 3D printer. The printing itself can be done by extruding a liquid, usually plastic, drop by drop, or by using a laser to fuse resins and metals. What we have here is a, a sample of a uh, titanium nose implant. Hod, who calls himself a 3D printing addict, has just co-authored a book on the subject that will be released next week. And the one thing he's betting will spur demand for the technology may surprise you. I think it will be food. I think food printing is to 3D printing what, uh, what gaming was for computers. Already, students at his lab have printed chocolate, peanut butter, even cakes. Beyond food, there are few disciplines Hod thinks 3D printing won't touch. Printing an iPod, he says, isn't that far off. If you think about the evolution of humans, we like to distinguish ourselves from other animals by the ability to make tools. And 3D printers are perhaps the ultimate tool. But what happens to laws and regulations when you have a tool to print anything? Next on 16 by 9, shooting off 11 rounds on a gun with a printed part. Where there's a computer, that could be a weapon. From guitars to race cars, even a model of your unborn child, people who embrace 3D printing are finding new uses for the emerging technology. Once used at the industrial level only, 3D printing has gone mainstream. Today in Manhattan, you can wander into a 3D printing store, the only of its kind, and take home your own printer for $2,200. Brie Pettis is the co-founder of MakerBot. One of the reasons we opened a retail store is because 3D printing is still science fiction to a lot of people. The idea that you can have a machine and, you know, it's, and send it a digital design, a 3D model that's virtual, and it'll turn into something real, a physical model, it's just, it blows people's minds. From tools and toys to models and jewelry, MakerBot's printer allows anyone to design and create. We've put the design in here with the SD card. We press the big red M to get it jumped to life. It heated up, and now it's drawing in plastic. To some, the printing is still rudimentary and nothing more than a novelty item. Brie sees it as a natural evolution. Back in 2008, you could download movies, you could download books, you could download music, but you couldn't download things. MakerBot's printer only works with plastic and can only print items smaller than a shoebox. Still, more than 15,000 have been sold. Our biggest customers are NASA, GE, and seven out of the top 10 architecture firms in the US. The digital blueprints for items are found on a website created by Bree and his team called Thingiverse. We've got a kitchen cabinet door handle. This is a fan duct for your air conditioner. Over 30,000 items that can be downloaded for free. An iPhone case. And then this is a fun one. This is somebody needed carpet pin locks for their Toyota RAV4. It's been dubbed Walmart in your home. So we're all used to shopping, and when we want something, we, shop, we think, okay, where am I gonna go buy it? Instead of thinking, hmm, can I make that instead? But when you can make anything, there are seemingly no boundaries, which is exactly the point for Cody Wilson. We wanna build the printable gun. The first in the world. Yeah, but you know, the, the important part isn't to be the first, but to actually do it, to just have one. Cody, a law student in Austin, Texas, is spearheading a group that's trying to create the Wiki Weapon, a digital design for a gun that anyone can download and build using a 3D printer. 
You have said that what you're setting out to do will create a weapon at every computer. Yeah, in a way of thinking, right? Where there's a computer, there could be a weapon. Well, literally, where there's a 3D printer, right? I don't think most people want a weapon in their home. I think that's fine, you know? I don't think you should be armed, right? But I think you should have the choice to be. While making your own gun in the U.S. isn't illegal, distributing the blueprints to others falls into a very gray territory. And that's where Cody is running into a number of roadblocks. So in the meantime, he's printing gun parts to avoid breaking any law. What's coming out is a lower receiver of an AR-15. The lower receiver is the only regulated part of an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, crucial to making the weapon work. But as soon as this is clean, this will be ready to use. At the shooting range, the plastic part fires 11 rounds. That's good, considering we couldn't even get the pin in. So um, 11 is 11, you know. Back to the drawing board. People will know the name AR-15 today because it was infamously used in the Newtown, Connecticut mass shootings. That's true. And you're providing people a digital blueprint to replicate the regulated part of that gun. That's right, that's right, yeah. That will upset a whole lot of people. Sure, but many people are already aware of what this gun is. This gun has a, a proud, strong reputation uh, coming out of Vietnam, you know, uh, the civilian version of used for military purposes. Mm, that's right. It's a people killer. That's right. That's what a gun is, you know, at its essence. I mean, let's, let's not talk about, you know, turkey shooting and, and hog hunting and stuff. I mean, what, what is a gun? A gun is a combat weapon, you know? And you want to give people a file to build one. That's right, yeah. Although Cody says he's not willing to go to jail over this, if American laws prevent him from moving forward, he may look for another country whose laws allow it. We've met people who are using this technology to print heart valves, ears, yeah. nose, skin. Sure. I'm sure there are people out there who could say, why do you have to print this gun when there are so many positive uses for this technology? For us, it's not a, we're not makers thinking, what's the best thing we can make? It's a political project. How do you achieve universal access to the firearm? So while 3D printing grows in a no man's land, a few rules or regulations, Professor Hod Lipson is weighing the implications. It's also important to uh, anticipate the consequences uh, of this technology for better and for worse. My goal in many ways is to say, look, you know, there isn't anything you're going to be able to do about this. Welcome to your printable future. And that is our broadcast for tonight. I'm Carolyn Jarvis. From all of us here at 16 by 9, thanks for watching and have a great weekend.